boy, I might have to cozy up. Yeah, somebody had asked, like, what are, just like, what are my thoughts on, like, religion being strict and staring people away? And my whole thing with that is that <clears throat> if you, if you have any kind of relationship with God, I think you should know enough to know that um, we are meant to embody the character of God, you know? So it's, of course, there are rules and there, there are rules for this life that we should be following that would ultimately lead to a better e experience in life for everyone. Um, but if you know those rules, you don't go telling people or forcing other people to try to conform to what you understand when they don't even have the relationship that you have. You have to first exist and embody those characteristics, those rules. You show the results of being patient and understanding and kind and and um disciplining yourself you show the results in the life that you live in the way that you walk and that is how you minister to people i believe or i think that's the most efficient way to um minister to people and that's my only like disparity with with some religions is that i think there's a lot of people telling other people what to do and condemning people for what they're not doing and there's not enough people actually just living the words and the truths that they know and embodying it to be that light in their character do I read the Bible every single day? It's like a part of my morning routine, actually. Like I get up and I pray and I read the Bible before I do anything else with my day. Do you follow it word for word or do you have your own interpretation? So for me, um, I follow it word for word because I've developed my relationship with God to a point now where it's like I, I, I listen for what God has to say and I want to understand his character better. I think that I used to have that mindset of like, I'll just make it my own interpretation. But I think that can get a little scary sometimes because when humans are left with the responsibility of making the rules it never works out fine it never works out because we just don't have enough wisdom and understanding and perspective to make the rules for our own lives you know it's like asking a child to raise themselves you know like nobody would ever do that so in that in that way i think um i think like for me it's just important to actually like read the word and understand like what god has to say and then i can embody that truth in my own way because at the end of the day he made every person to be their own person like you have individuality and personality for a reason so when you know the truths you can live by those truths in the way that you know like i i follow mad rules like i abide by the sabbath i have dietary restrictions i'm like self-disciplined in in ways like i don't drink i don't smoke i don't have sex and stuff like that but that's just my relationship and i'm still able to be myself i can still embody and even be a better version of myself through all that so yeah am i religious or spiritual i think that i am see it's it's a hard question because i want to say i'm spiritual but i think sometimes we take we take that statement and kind of um remove like what's the word i'm looking for responsibility we remove responsibility by saying that we're spiritual because we think that it's a sustain where you can just go whichever way you want but i definitely think that anybody who's religious is has to be spiritual if you're not spiritual then there's no point in being religious um because you have to first know god to then use religion to exist in communities of people who know god but if you don't know god for yourself um then you're not really interacting with god in a, in a spiritual way and if you're not doing that then that's where you get these religions that are just physical where people are just put so much of their ego into it where they're just angry and shouting at people and condemning people and telling people what to do that's all ego if you're spiritual at all even if you're not religious like spirit you look at spiritual people and they're all about peace and vibes and understanding and patience that's what spirituality does to you when you start to understand the world outside of your own ego and start identifying with it with more with your spirit you will see the world from a whole new perspective you will see people from a whole new perspective so i don't think you can be religious without being spiritual and i don't think you should be spiritual without also holding yourselves accountable for the truths that religion tries to offer but kind of skews sometimes you feel one must go to church and be close to be close and in tune with god do you think the bible is flawless and has no wrong word in it i don't think the bible is flawed at all i think it is actually an insanely sophisticated and perfect book i think that's if we look at it at the surface or if we don't take it seriously enough 
then we start to point out flaws. But the, the flaws aren't actually there. I think the flaws come from an, a lack of context and a lack of understanding. Like, I, and that's both sides. Like, people follow the Bible without context, too. Like, ultimately, the entire message of the Bible or the entire message of God, I think, is to love people first, even your enemies. Like, in the Bible, the Israelites weren't even allowed um, to be or rejoice when god was like destroying their enemies like they, that wasn't their character <sighs> do i believe in the rapture <sighs> absolutely bro <sighs> i absolutely believe in the rapture um sometimes i'd be like sometimes i actually be exhausted of like living here on earth like it's like a part of me is like ready to go like and that's just on some like mental stuff because like i'd be just like exhausted honestly from like living and having to fight off like so many like spiritual demons and temptations like on a day-to-day -day basis in my own head like in real life gets exhausting it's like bro if you're not if you're not fighting off demons in your head every day then i don't think that you're you might not be fully experiencing God um, on earth because it's like it's almost like once you decide like, bro, I'm a follow what God has to say, you immediately get attacked like you will be experiencing depression and anxiety and temptations on a whole new level. It's like you become a target for evil in the world. And that's like an everyday thing. And that's why a journey with God, bro, it's not like a it's not convenient. It's not easy. Not in this world, because this world is like, bro, it's. This world is, 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 this world is something, bro. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to keep it real with you, bro. Like, it's not an easy walk, but it's worth it. And if anything, it's, it, it reinforces your understanding because when, when, when evil starts to attack you in this world, bro, that's when you know that you're going in the right way. Because the people who are living just casually free, just having fun, not to say you don't get to have fun still, bro, but I'm going to keep it real, bro. It's not always going to be easy. These are all doubts I've had I've, and I never find answers to them. What doubts do you have? How come... How do you come to terms with starvation and sex trade and other bad things that children go through when there is a God? Um, should those things not exist or why do they exist? OK, so basically your question is like, how can God permit evil in this world? And this is something I've thought about, like, to some length at length. And I think to understand that you have to kind of understand the context of the world that we live in right now. So. Take it back to the beginning when Lucifer, you know, was an angel, you know, the angel who fell from hell, brought like fell to hell, brought like a third of the angels with him. What 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 really destroyed Lucifer was ego. And I, I, I stand by it today that ego is our first sin. Ego was the first sin because when Lucifer developed ego, that's when everything went wrong. It's because like Lucifer was just looking at himself like, bro, I'm cute. I'm talented. I can sing. I'm this. I'm that. I'm that. And in his mind, like that, that's just self-love. Like that's not evil. But and that's how I think he convinced like a third of the angels, because that doesn't sound bad on the surface. Right. But I think that God had enough foresight to see how what seemed innocent on the surface would actually lead to so much more. Now, think about it like this. When somebody's looking at themselves, feeling themselves, there's going to be another person who's going to be looking at them like, now I'm feeling envy. Now I'm feeling or I might be feeling insecurity because I'm now comparing myself to you. So now that creates envy from envy comes hate from hate comes anger and killing and this and that. So it's like sin in itself starts very small and innocent on the surface. But the things that we see in the world now, like mass murder and rapes and genocide and this and this, that is sin potentialized in extreme forms. So if God is to come back now and say, hey, I'm going to destroy sin. Sin. He's not going to destroy just the evil sin, like the maximized sins that we like to point at and say, why does that exist? He's going to destroy sin at its core. And that sin, that core sin exists in all of us. That's the same ego that we battle with every day. So if we want to see all that evil out there dis destroyed, that also means that we're going to have to be destroyed. And I think that's the dilemma that God is caught in, is wanting to destroy all of that, but knowing that you can't destroy the leaves and the fruits without destroying the seed and the root and that seed is in every single person on earth and it's to the point now where we actually embrace it we love it and that's why the world is evil because the things that seem okay on the surface are the same things that lead to all these 
grievous evils in the world. So I think that the, the, I said it before that, but the dilemma that God is caught in is having to remove evil from the world without destroying people. And that's why the rapture isn't here yet, because there are people who are adding to this problem, but they don't even know that they're adding because sin has been masked. Like evil has been masked so well now. Like we see evil as stuff like self-love and this and that, and that's not to judge anybody, but I'm just saying like, that's the reality of our situation. Like so many of us don't even even know how much the things we do contribute to the very things that we don't want to see existing anymore um so yeah man i fully believe the the rapture is coming but i also understand that like god is patient because he's taking the time to work with and try to help and save as many people as possible or reveal as many people as possible to the truths of the world so they at least have a chance have a choice to say hey i'm either going to listen and follow this truth or i'm going to continue with what i want to do and go the other way and then when the day comes bro when the day of judgment comes that's when it's going to be like bro like you know, every I think every single person, I believe that everything, every single person is going to be exposed to the truth that they need to know. And it's going to come down to like personal choice. I never thought about it that way. But now I have the question of where do you find the line between good self-confidence and being egotistical? Um, well, the thing about confidence is that like. For instance, I imagine, for instance, angels had every single right to be, you know, confident. Like, they're awesome. They look great. They sing great. They're perfect. They have wings. They glitter. They can fly. Like, bro, why would I not feel myself, you know? But that's where the humility comes from. It's, it's like the confidence comes, comes from within because you never need to prove who you are to anybody else. You never even need to say what you got going on. It's like, bro, you've never seen a Frosted Flakes commercial. Because Frosted Flakes knows that they're that cereal, bro. Like, nobody is fronting on Frosted Flakes right now. So they don't have to go out here and put up commercials to say, hey, we're great and we taste good. It's like, bro, I already know that. So I don't need to prove it to anybody. That's real confidence. And that's the distinction between ego and confidence. Ego feels the need to assert itself continuously. You continuously need to prove yourself or prove yourself to somebody or something. Confidence is just like, bro. I already got it. I know I got it. And you don't got to tell me I got it. I don't have to tell you I got it because I know within myself and that's all that matters. There are different kinds of jealousy. God gives us free will. We can make our own decisions. But when we don't choose him, he is jealous of that. But he forces us to choose him. We're slaves. But if he forces us to choose him, we're slaves. If you love any person, like you don't want to see them making decisions that destroy themselves. So it's like, bro, I'd be jealous, too, of the fact that like somebody I love is going in the wrong path and there's nothing I can do about it. I'm going to be I'm going to feel some type of way about it, you know? There's so many people who know about God, but don't actually know God. And that's why we get into all these arguments and there's all this confusion because nobody is going directly to the source and saying, let me check this out. Let me hear what this guy has to say. Let me see what he's talking about for myself, you know, and figure it out for myself. So what you're saying is to get closer to God is to read the Bible. I think the best two ways to get close to God is prayer and reading the Bible. And I think the former is probably more convenient. Um, and you can always start there, bro. Like it's dead just like getting to know another person. I will always say this, like a relationship with God is not just a he's creator, I am creation kind of thing it's an actual relationship in the same way that if you if you want to get to know a person you sit down and you talk to them and you're honest with them and you share with them and you listen for what they have to say like it's the same thing with god like you have to pray and have conversations and be honest about where you're at and then you can read the bible and see what he has to say about the things that you're talking about the things that you're struggling with it's like I saw this, uh, this, like this one guy was talking about like how he prays, like he prays with the Bible in his hand and he'll read the Bible and then he'll like look up and pray about what he just read. And then he'll read the Bible some more. And it's like, it's like, a, that's, that's like a conversation for him. Like as he's reading, like the conversation that he's having in prayer is answered. Like it, it's crazy. Like the Bible is insane to me because that book real life comes to life. Yo, it's not like. It's not like a, it's not like a book like you just sit down and read and look at like a lecture. It's like, bro, that book will come to life. You will be like you will be like something will be on your mind heavy 
and you will like start reading the Bible and then you will read a passage that speaks to exactly what you're dealing with. Like, bro, it's crazy. Like that book will come. That is a spiritual book, bro. It's not a regular book. It's not something to be played with. I know this is stereotypical, but have you ever believed in black magic or experienced it or superstitions of culture? I don't know. You just have to understand that like spirituality exists whether or not we choose to um, acknowledge it. Right. So like there's spirituality that's good. And then there's evil in the world. There's evil that exists beyond the physical. And I think some people take advantage of that and work with or are worked through that you know so but i don't look too much into that because it's like bro if i want to be as good as i can i can't spend my entire life focused on the enemy looking at evil because that's all that's going to consume my mind is like all the evil that's in the world and all the evil that's going on i have to focus on the light i have to focus on the light that i'm trying to nurture and build within myself so that I can like, that has to be what's in my thoughts. That has to be what I'm meditating on. God will never put you in a situation you can't handle. But what about suicide? I think suicide is still a choice. Like I, I consider suicide all the time. I was considering suicide this morning, not even on some like depressing shit, but just on some like, bro, life gets really hard sometimes. And sometimes I can't get out of my head. And I considered suicide like realistically, like, bro, I just don't want to continue existing in this way. But at the end of the day, like it's, it's a choice. It's, it's, it's a choice. Like you choose whether or not you want to continue and push forward, or if you're just going to end it here. And today, like I was considering suicide, bro. And I could have I could have stayed in bed and went down into that hole, which I did for like an hour. But then I found myself getting into a very dark space that I didn't want to get into because you can get real dark in that rabbit hole. Um, so what I did was I got up. I had to literally like jump myself out of bed. I ran. I went to the shower. I put on some music and I just sat in the shower and I had that conversation with God. Like I prayed about it. Like I prayed to be alleviated from the burdens that were on my mind and bro i'm gonna keep it real with you dog when i got out that shower i was feeling lighter and that's the thing it's like that's that's the choice i think sometimes you i think there's like a quote that like when you're at your weakest god is at his strongest because it's like god is waiting for an opportunity to show you he is there you know so even in like those darkest moments like i prayed about it and to feel that literally lift off of me, to feel the music that I was listening to speak to me and live in my mood, even though it was on shuffle, I just knew that, bro, like something was happening spiritually there to literally pull me from where I was. And it doesn't mean that I was out here just jumping and happy afterwards, but I definitely wasn't where I was before. And that's just like, that's just another moment where God would, could just show me like, hey, bro, I'm here. All you have to do is reach out to me so I can show you that I'm here. I just need to be educated. I don't mean to be making anyone angry or upset. Oh, no, bro. We're not angry. Uh, I hope we're not. I hope nobody's being angry. <laughs> That's not the vibes we have here. <laughs> this is cool, bro. The moon was the moon is right there, too. That's cool. It's a cool vibe. It's a cool vibe. What do you think about the Old Testament versus the New Testament and how Christians almost disregard the Old Testament? I don't think that we can disregard the Old Testament because the Bible is an entire book. It's it's like if the New Testament was supposed to disregard the Old Testament, then the New Testament would have been the Bible. But it's an entire storyline, you know, like the Old Testament is about the prophets and the people and the new testament is about jesus coming back and going forward from there there had to be death to provide for your life um so they had to be sacrificing lambs and stuff like that whereas jesus came down and he became the sacrifice so that is where we're at now that's why we're not out here sacrificing sheep or nothing like the sacrifice has been made for us all we have to do now is literally just work on ourselves like it's like the most convenient era i think of the bible because the bible speaks on this era too um and i think that's why like i imagine this is just my guess but i think that's also why god isn't so like as prevalent and in your face like in the in the old in the old testament he would be like you know putting people through water like raising like how can you not believe in god when you're walking in the middle of an ocean you know but like the bible also speaks that this generation will demand signs but the thing about signs is that they give us an excuse not to have faith because we always need you we always ask god to prove himself prove himself prove himself but it's like bro like i sent my son down to die for you like you are gonna have to give me some faith bro like the entire bible is about jesus well yeah i mean like yeah the the, the old testament is the prophet's 
prophets prophesying about the coming of Jesus. But the thing is that like the prophets were talking about like a king that would come to redeem his people. And back then people just thought that when Jesus came, he would just be this triumphant like king who was just like on a golden horse and just big and strong. But when Jesus came and he was a servant leader, um, people, that's why people didn't believe that he was a son of God because he wasn't what they expected. But I think that is, that just adds truth to the fact that to the fact of faith, it's like, bro, God came down and he existed to exemplify his character. Like he wasn't here to be some kind of triumphant king that rules over people he was here to be a servant leader somebody who led by example somebody who would be with the poor and be with the demons and be helping people and loving people like he literally gave human beings a blueprint on how to be a human being how do you read the bible now it's like i'm starting to look into specific topics like the other day like i looked up scriptures on patience or scriptures on taming your tongue and then i read when i go and look at direct scriptures i don't I, I, I developed the habit of now, like not only just reading like a direct scripture, but reading like maybe a page before that to understand the context of what's going on. Because so many people misquote the Bible because we just look at singular scriptures and say, oh, that's what it means. Like, no, bro, you got to go back, like read the page before to understand what was being said to bring this point about then read a page after that to get the whole picture on what that individual individual scripture means. <laughs> How do you find the strength to be a Christian in a world so secular? You know, it's really hard because not a people have this mindset. It's not easy, bro. And it wasn't supposed to be easy, but I think that is a testament to your faith. And, you know, like it's not every day you're going to be a perfect Christian. Like you are a work in progress. But like one thing that my dad told me that really just like really helps me to think about is that God cares more about your overall direction than your occasional mistakes. So if you, if overall you're going in the right direction, but you're stumbling and you're slipping, that's all a part of the journey. That's why he's here. That's why you engage constantly in prayer. Bro, I pray all the time. Bro, when I tell you I'm praying about everything all day, every day, like in my head, like the simplest things, like I'll start feeling anxious. I'm praying about that. I'll start feeling a little bit depressed. I'm praying about that. Like, bro, I pray because I feel like, bro, that's, that's how I get to know God better and trust God better. Like I engage him in my day-to-day -day life so that when I see him present himself and I see him work things out, bro, like it just, it, 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 it just makes my faith dive deeper. Like vague question, but what do you believe in God for? <laughs> I believe in God for purpose, for, 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 a, for, to get context on existence and reality and to just better understand life and how to do it and what to do and what is the purpose like we have all these I've, i'm just a thinker bro so i've always had like these crazy existential questions but like before i would seek these answers in the world so i'd be talking to people i'd be you know doing drugs and trying to figure out like you know psychedelics finding all these answers from the world and they never i never found answers that sufficed you know um but with god it's like bro like it's like you're talking, you're literally talking to the guy who made everything. So he's going to give you wisdom. And I think that's a difference. That's the main difference I've found. When you know God, you encounter wisdom. When you don't know God, you can encounter knowledge. And there's so many people who mistake knowledge for wisdom. We get knowledge and we think that we're smart. But wisdom is perspective. Knowledge is like I read a book and I know what's in there. Wisdom is me knowing how to apply what I learned from that book in the right time, in the, to, in the right space, to the right people. Like, wisdom goes far beyond knowledge. And I, that's, that's what I think the difference is. Like, when it comes to existence, I think you can get so much knowledge about life, but you will never understand life and understand people or understand yourself um, until you encounter the wisdom of God. And I truly believe that because I've experienced it. How do you entertain your relationship with God? Entertain? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you mean by entertaining my relationship with God. Like, how do I... I be laughing with God sometimes, bro. Like, I be laughing with God. Like, there's there's like a season for everything. There's a time for everything. So there's seasons when it's like, bro, me and God will just be like laughing, having fun, just in love. And then there's seasons when it's like, I'm being put through it like i'm going through it i'm working and i'm building and i'm breaking and it's not so fun you know that's when a lot of questions of faith come in but also that's when i reestablish my faith even deeper but 
it's just it's just a time and it's a time for everything, bro. So you hear his voice. I think I hear I've heard I've experienced the presence of God. I think sometimes it's like to hear the voice of God doesn't always mean you hear like a bellowing, hey, listen to me. Like that's that's not always the voice of God. Sometimes the voice of God can show up to you and other people like you ever be talking to somebody and they're talking about their life, but they're actually speaking about your life like that's I think that's the voice of God. And like that's that's really like what I hope. And I've kind of seen that my work does sometimes like sometimes like, bro, you'll be going through something like it's not by chance that you're going through a breakup and a video that I've made about breakups pop up on your timeline that that's not by chance. And that's not by me. Like I can't make something knowing your life to put it in front of you. You know, I make what comes to me for me. And I think God then takes that and directs it to your life. And that's like, that's an example of the voice of God. Like he will bring things to you and speak to you through other people and through other things and just through experiences. Like the voice of God is everything. So he can speak to you through everything. Like sometimes, bro, I'll be here like talking and a thought will come in my mind of like, don't say that. And I'll be thinking like, should I say it? And then the light will flicker, you know? And I'm like, okay, I know I shouldn't say it because just simple things like that. It's like, bro, sometimes you just, it's just a feeling. And I think that's why I I emphasize so much on learning to identify with the spirit that is inside you, because the more you identify with the spirit is the more you will understand when it talks to you. It's like, I see a light flicker and I know that it's speaking to me. It's not that I'm crazy. It's because the feeling inside of me says, yeah, that's what it is. And I can't deny the feeling that is in my gut. You know, like that's that's why you have to like have a relationship with the spirit. So you start to experience the world, I think, in a, on a spiritual level. So when things happen like that, other people will just look at it and think it's nothing. You know, it's something because it correlates to what was already going on in your head and your spirit can confirm what it is that was happening. Like it's a crazy process like spirituality i think it's like bro you can't you you will you you cannot experience life in its fullness without venturing into spirituality i think it's like human beings exist in three facets we experience we, we exist physically we exist mentally slash emotionally and we exist spiritually and i think so many of us exist physically emotionally and mentally and we completely just push spirituality to the side but that's like cutting a chunk of who you are out of yourself you will never feel or settle into yourself completely unless you understand and accept yourself as whole i'm an atheist and i believe and respect that i respect you bro how do you identify with the spirit inside of you so i think we all have the spirit inside of us right we just call it by different names like some of us say it's our intuition some people say i'm listening to my heart some people say i'm listening to my gut but really like that's kind of putting a simple name to something that is actually very deep like the fact that you can feel something that confirms a fact inside of you is not simple. That's not just your gut grumbling. Like that's actually something that is alive and present and aware and conscious that is sending you a signal or a message to direct the path of your life or direct the decisions that you make. Like that is insane and that is very sophisticated so i think that to identify more with the spirit you start to identify more with what i think we commonly call our intuition like when you just know that something is right or you know that something is wrong you know that you shouldn't be somewhere you know that you shouldn't go somewhere you just know it you just start to follow that more and i think it can be difficult because the what our spirit directs us to do is often inconvenient to what we desire or what we want for example in your spirit you might know that you're not supposed to be in a certain relationship but currently you desire this person you desire talking to them you want to spend time with them they're cute you like them but in your spirit something just knows something is wrong and that's the kind of like that's when you have to start to decide like as much as i want this as much as i desire this presently some i'm going to listen to the voice that's inside of me telling me not to be here and i think the more you listen to that is the more your life will start to pick up and go in a different direction you have to understand that your spirit exists on a level that is beyond what you can see i, I believe Believe that your spirit exists on a spiritual plane and your spirit can see 
your life path, you know? So your spirit will see where you could be 10 years from now and inform you on the decisions that you need to make to get to your greatest good 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the line. And that will look some like something as simple as what you post or what you watch or what you look at or who you hang around, you know? Like it might not make sense right now, but I just feel like, bro, your spirit knows way more than you, so it's worth trusting.